Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis and welcome to this video lesson. What we're going to talk about is how to take a flow chart that shows us how to draw a hollow triangle and change that into a Visual Basic code. So, for example, you'll see over here that I have the Visual Studio program already open and I have the code already solved and I'm going to be explaining that in just a moment. But first let me just go over a couple of concepts. Um, here's how we're going to do it. Let's say that the user is going to enter the height, and so in fact to have in Visual Basic in the uh, graphical user interface, I ask the user to enter the triangle height. Now once that's entered, then we're going to draw the, appropriate, the triangle appropriately. So for example, if the user enters 5, then you'll see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows, and the first row we're going to call row 0, and then row 1 all the way to row 4. So how do we know how many rows to draw? Well, we can just simply take the user number, subtract one from it, and that tells us the number of rows if we're starting from zero. How many initial spaces do we draw before the first star? Well, we can just simply take the user number, subtract one from it, and that tells us the number of spaces. One, two, three, four in this case, if the user number is five. And then, of course, spaces to draw inside, well, initially that's going to be zero. But eventually it'll be one, and then it'll be two more than that, which will be three, and then two more than that, which will be five, and then finally when we get to the very last row, it's just all going to be stars. So here are some other examples. For example, if the user enters four, if the user enters two, then here's what it's supposed to look like. But in this case, I think what we're going to do is we're going to limit um, the smallest number and the largest number that the user can enter. So let me zoom in a little bit. Let's go to 150 percent. And here's what we'll do. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about the algorithm development. I'm just simply going to demonstrate how we can take a flowchart like this one that I've designed. I should be able to give this to you and you should be able to generate the Visual Basic code or whatever language you're using. Generate the code for this uh, given the following flowchart. So I'll just show you step by step what I've done. Let me switch over here to Visual Basic and if we go ahead and take a look at the code area, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to clear the input or clear the text uh, display box. Actually, let me say that again. I want to clear the the label here that displays a previous entry. That's the whole purpose of this particular line to clear the display. Next, we have a bunch of declarations such as counter, user input, row, spaces in, spaces out. They're all supposed to be whole numbers according to the flowchart. So there are my declarations. Then I'm going to obtain the user input. Now in the flowchart, we just say read the user input. And that means in Visual Basic, we're just simply going to convert whatever's in the text box, in this case to a whole number, and then place it into the variable user input. All right. Then I have an if statement. I know that this is an if statement because uh, there is not an arrow that's going back to the top of it. There's no looping structure taking place. So therefore, the user input, as long as it's less than three, I'm sorry, is it less than 3 or is it greater than 11? If that's the case, then we need to display a message box indicating to the user that they entered an inappropriate number. It needs to be at least 3 and up to and including 11, but nothing more, nothing less. And so that's the whole purpose of this if statement right here. If the user input is less than 3 or if it's greater than 11, then let's blank the text box. Let's display a message box indicating that there's a, an error and then we'll simply exit the sub. So we don't want to continue from here if the user input is not in the range. But let's assume it is in the range. Well, if that's the case, then we need to prepare for drawing spaces and drawing stars. So spaces inside will initially be zero. Spaces outside, well, that's going to be user input minus one, as I've already explained, and then the rows equal to zero. And so that's what you see over here. Okay, now we're ready for the while statement, and I know that this is a while statement because you'll see that there's an arrow that comes back in to the top, so this thing is looping, so we'll just simply use a while statement. While row is less than user input. Okay, so that would be this statement right here. While row is less than user input. Now if that's the case, then the first thing we'll do, if, it's this, if this is true, is we'll set the counter equal to zero. Well, that's this statement right here. The next statement is another while statement and you can see here that this is a loop. As counter is less than spaces out, then we're going to send a space to the output and we're going to increment counter. So if counter is less than spaces out, we're going to send a space to the output 
and we're going to increment counter. Well, once this while statement is finished, when this is no longer true, then we're going to append a star to the output, and then we'll set counter equal to zero. So once this is no longer true, we'll send a star to the output, and then we'll set the counter equal to zero. So this is going to give us our first star. So what happened is we drew some spaces. That's what this is, the initial spaces. And then we're going to draw the star. So if I could show you Microsoft Excel, we drew the initial spaces, and then we drew the star. That's what has happened up to this point. Okay. Now, let me go back to the flowchart. And um, I'm going to ask the question, have I reached the last row? Uh, am, I re am I ready to draw my last row? So let me go back to Excel. Am I at this point right here? Well, let's, for example, take a look at the user number. If the user number is 5, 5 minus 1 tells me if I'm at that last row. If the counter is equal to 4, or if the row, rather, is equal to 4, then I'm at the last row for a user number of 5. And so that's what I've done over here in this flow chart. I'm asking the question, is row equal to user num minus 1? If that's the case, then I'm at the last row. Well, if I'm at the last row, I better draw a bunch of stars. Now, here's the thing. If I'm at the last row, I've already drawn this star right here. That's this one over here. So if I've drawn that star over here, then I need to draw these remaining stars. Let's see if we can find a pattern here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the user number is five. So if I say two times five, that's 10, minus two gives me eight. So two times the user input minus two will give me the remaining stars to draw. Let's see if that works. Two times four is eight, minus two would be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, looks like that pattern works. And that's in fact why I have that in the algorithm. So if the counter is less than two times user input minus two, then go ahead and draw the stars, increment counter, and that's what you see over here in Visual Basic. Let me switch back over here. So while the counter is less than two times user input minus two, and I put parentheses out here just to make sure that the user, or that you and I, the programmer, can see clearly that this whole thing is what's being evaluated, if whether or not counter is less than that. If it is, then we're going to draw star, we're going to increment the counter. Okay, so that's the while statement that you see here. When this thing is finished, then we exit the procedure, and I did that by just simply saying exit sub. So this whole thing is first within an if statement. This thing is nested, the while statement is nested in an if statement. So this while statement is nested in this if statement. Now, if this is false, then we go over here. So if this is false, we go over to this else if statement. And I ask, well, what about if the row is equal to zero? In other words, are we at the first row? Right? If the row is equal to zero, then just draw a star. Draw the initial spaces and draw a star, and that's it. Okay, so if the row is equal to zero, then if that's true, then spaces in is equal to minus one. And the reason why I'm doing that is later on I'm going to change spaces in. I'm going to increment it by two. Well, if I take in uh, minus one, and then uh, if I say spaces in, scroll over here. Here it is. Uh, spaces in is equal to minus one. If I can increment it by two, that means it's one. And so what this does is it allows me to get that first space in between all these items. So that's why I'm setting it up in this way to prepare for the future. That's why I say if the row is equal to zero, set spaces in equal to negative one. But what if that's not the case? What if row zero, if row is not equal to zero? If that's false, then we're going to have to draw the spaces in between the stars of the triangle, right? So this space, or these spaces, or these spaces, that's what we're going to have to do. And the way that we're going to do that is via a counter that's counting up all the way to the spaces inside. So let me take a look at the Visual Basic program, and you'll see over here, uh, while spaces is less than spaces in, so that's this statement over here. Notice that it's within the else uh, portion, and then uh, we're going to append a space to the output, and we're going to increment the counter. So we append a space to the output, and we increment the counter. And then after that, we just keep on doing this over and over and over again until it's finished. Then we put a star at the very end, and that's what this is, append a star to the output. So if I were to go back to Excel, what this is doing is it's drawing all the spaces 
and then it'll draw the remaining star. Okay. Now, just so that you can see this um, and in context, this is an if statement. If it's true, do this. If it's false, then I have an else if statement. And then finally, if both of those are false, then I have an else statement that, um, that takes into consideration uh, the, the, the looping statement. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of here. <laughs> Let me show you in Visual Basic what I'm talking about. So I have the if, if statement that says, if row is equal to user input minus one, that's this. Okay, if that's true, then there's a while statement. Okay, there's the nested while statement. Now, if this is false, I have another else if statement that's asking if row is equal to zero. That's this. Okay. Finally, if both of these are false, then within my else statement, I have a while statement. And that's what I've done over here. Within my else statement, I have a while statement because both of those were false, so we'll just end up doing this. Okay. Well, uh, when we're finished, then we're going to get ready for the next iteration. So that means decrement spaces out. So there it is. I'm decrementing spaces out. Incrementing spaces in by two. I'm going to increment row. There it is. And then finally, I'm going to go to the next row. Well, in Visual Basic, that just simply means sending a VB new line to whatever the label currently has. And then now the cursor is going to be blinking at the beginning of the next line. And that's the end of the code. So let me give you a sample run this. By the way, I changed the design such that uh, the font is courier, and I think I changed this to 10 points, and I made it left aligned. So let's start off with uh, three rows. Okay, so there's uh, three rows, and here's four rows, five rows, so forth and so on. So no matter how many rows, the program knows how to calculate this. Um, I entered a zero. That's why I'm going to get this um, message box. That's incorrect. I shouldn't have entered, entered a zero. I meant to enter 10. Click draw a triangle. That's better. I'll click, or I'll enter 11. Draw a triangle. There it is. And then I can't get any bigger than 11. If I type 12, it's not going to allow me to do that. I have to enter an integer from greater than or equal to 3, and it has to also be less than 11. All right, so if I entered 9, say, for example, there we go. So that's how it works out. Now, if you want to step through your code, one of the things you can do is to insert a break. So if you wanted to stop the program, say, for example, right here at the user input, just click over here to insert a break, run the program. After you type in a number, for example, 3, click Draw Triangle, and now the code's going to stop here. Now, for this section down here, I suggest you can, you can either use the error list or the immediate windows. I like autos because it shows me Right now, what are these values equal to? So what is text user input? Looks like it's quote three quote. Well, after I convert that to an integer, I put it into user num or user input, which is currently zero, then user uh, input should be three. So here are my tools how I can advance. And if you want to step into a function, you use this. If you want to step out of a function, you use this. Now just use this right now. Step over. So we're stepping over that. We're placing the text three into the User input should be a number. There it is, three. Okay, and then we can just simply step to, through this, see if it works out. So you'll notice that spaces in is being assigned to zero. So there it is, zero. Spaces out is going to be user input minus one. Well, if user input is three, three minus one is two. And there's the two. Row is going to be set equal to three, and so forth and so on. So I'll just simply let you go through this. You can see that I'm stepping through and I'm looking over here to see what the values are equal to and if there's a logical error, this is how you can stop it, or this is how you can catch it, by stepping through the code to find out what are the values at each given moment in time. And then if you just want to continue, you can click over here, or press F5 to continue, and then it takes you back over here to the code. All right, so this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.